it makes you long for the days when everybody was 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 just checked out. The days where I grew up. My first experience in Chicago was my my friend. We we met a woman who had a an impact on our our life when we were children. Uh, and not children, but we were in our early 20s. We were children. We were young kids. We didn't know the ways of the world. And uh, we were in a bar in East Meadow, Long Island, called Dugan's, which used to have really good wings, and I'm sure it still does. But we were there, and we were all boozed up. We were all fucked up, having fun. And this woman, attractive, in a stripper-esque quality, You know, she was hot. Not beautiful, but hot. She was, there was, you know, there was a sexual energy to her. She was just, you know, she was down for it. She was that type of woman. She was dancing on the bar at, at Dugan's. And then my friend Joe, who was about maybe at that point a little under 300 pounds, also got on a bar and he was dancing. Uh, at Dugan's and but uh, but truly light on his feet like a Jackie Gleason and he just missed falling off the bar and he was so hammered he didn't know what he was doing but just graceful like a uh, like a figure skater just the grace of him dancing it was really something to see we all just stood there and stared at him because it was like amazing to watch and this girl dancing on the bar as well finally got off the bar and she came over to me and she goes, who's this fat fuck? And she pointed to him. And I was like, oh, that's my friend Joe. And uh, she had she'd met us a few times. We knew her. She was, she was friends with some of our friends. She had a presence in Levittown, Long Island. Levittown is the first suburb in the country. And, uh, you know, there was a lot of promise there post-World War II. And now it's mostly, you know, flea markets and heroin. But, you know... That's what it is now. And that's what it was starting to become then. It was just a suburban, you know, it was trashy, you know. One guy said once to me, you know, one of the kids we knew in Levittown, we walked into his little Levitt house. I think his dad put like a a new Pergo wood floor, like fake wood. Man, they love that over there. They love fake wood because you could drop things on it and spill things on it and you know, you could have fist fights in the room and nothing would ever affect the quality of the flooring. Um, so this guy gets a Pergo wood floor, which cost about $500. And then he said to me, he goes, my dad put a new floor in this house. It raised the value of the house, $50,000. And I'm like, well, didn't the, didn't the fluff? Jesus, fuck! Does that read on the thing? Okay. It just drives me nuts. The sirens drive me nuts here. I mean, it's just fucking insane. We're going to get, we'll be back in the studio. This is, uh, you know, we, we couldn't record a podcast. We're announcing a 34 week tour. It's a, you know, there's a lot going on here, but this idiot then explained to me that his house was now worth a hundred thousand dollars more money because his dad spent $500 on a fake wood floor. And I tried to tell him that that wasn't true. And he just stared at me. And then you realize that like, you couldn't get through to these people. They were just, they were just biological waste, you know? That's really what they were. They, you just stared at them and you were like, okay, sure, you know, whatever you want. Um, but we met this woman and she started dating my friend and, 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 and immediately she was a whirlwind. It was just fights and problems and websites that her name was mentioned on where people had accused her of all kinds of things like writing fake checks and stealing their money and, and, and being a con artist. I liked her immediately. I really liked her immediately. There was something about her I enjoyed. She was a lot of fun to go out to dinner with. Uh, she was a real con. You know, she worked people over. She had dudes in different towns that took their fucking money. And I think that's great. I support all of that. Um, and yes, she was ruining my friend's life, but someone's got to ruin your life. That's really what it comes down to. Someone has to come into your life and destroy it. Unless you'll do it yourself. Somebody's got to come in with a big dick or a wet pussy and destroy your ability to make decisions. 
They'll destroy your relationship with your family. They'll destroy uh, your motivation, your ability to work at your job. They'll put distance between you and your closest friends. Someone needs to do that. You don't live a full life unless you've met someone where you literally will follow them into like some. Now, you know, a lot of people don't, don't, don't go that route, which is fine too. And they have other things and whatever. But most people in the world, you're just waiting for that to happen. You want to meet somebody who will just, you could just, you know, just say, fuck you, mom and dad, if you don't like this person, you don't get them, you don't understand them. So that's what it is. You're either going to destroy your own life or someone's going to do it for you. That's the way this world works. That's all. It'll be drugs, it'll be alcohol, it'll be food, it'll be sex, it'll be your own ambition, it'll be money, it'll be your fucking ungrateful children, it'll be the job that didn't give a fuck about you, it'll be some soulless multinational corporation that you spent 45 years in, that one day you just go in and you've got a, a gun in your pocket, your fucking pants, and you're ready to just blow everybody's head off, you know? Who knows? It's going to be one of those things. It might as well be a stripper from Chicago. It might as well be a cocaine addict from the suburbs of Chicago. Why not? Great tits. Why not? It's going to be something. It's going to be a bad real estate deal you did with your brother-in-law. Something's going to get you. Don't get out of it alive, folks. It doesn't matter. Make your mistakes young. And he did. And, and my friends made their mistakes young and you know, old and middle age, but we met her and she was immediately a whirlwind. She was immediately somebody who came in full force, had opinions about everybody, about everything. You know, I saw this, my dad, I mean, my dad's wife came into his life. My dad had had one failed marriage. She came in, she's like, this is the way your life is going to be run. And my dad's Irish and Irish men marry their mothers. And he goes, okay, good. I need a mother. I need someone to come in and tell me what to do. Where's the washer and dryer? How does all of it work? When do we pay our bills? The first of the month? Okay, I'll try that. For years and years, we've been paying them when, whenever we could, but we'll try to pay them on the first, honey. That's a good idea. She came in and just cleaned it up, you know? This woman came in. I don't want to say her name. I'm not going to say her name. We're going to call her because this was her nickname. Her nickname, we called her Blagojevich because Rod Blagojevich was... Uh, I believe the governor of Illinois and Rod Blagojevich, of course, was a shady guy. And I think he's in jail right now. And uh, Blagojevich, yeah, he was an American politician, the 40th governor of Illinois. And then he was impeached, convicted, and removed from office in 2009. And, uh, you know, he was, you know, from, you know, I mean, Chicago is just the most corrupt state in the union. He was removed from office for corruption, bribes. All of that stuff. You know, it says, Lagojevich was impeached and removed. He solicited bribes for political appointments, including Barack Obama's vacant U.S. Senate seat after Obama was elected president. Fun. So he was sentenced to 14 years in federal prison. So for the rest of this, we'll just call this woman Blagojevich because, you know, she was from Chicago. She played fast and loose with the truth. But again, she was a fun person. Not always. She had tantrums and things. She'd go out to bars and fight people. You know, she was one of those people. She's one of those people. You'd go to a bar and you'd be having a cigarette outside and then all of a sudden she'd be being thrown out by the bouncers, you know? You know, I'd go, where's she? Where's Blagojevich? And then she's in a headlock. Two guys are walking her outside, you know? She wasn't Jackie Kennedy, sure. Um, but my friend, you know, his parents, you know, being boomers, they were just kind of like, letting it happen. They realized like I did that, you know, that generation of people from Long Island, those, those boomer parents, they, they were not helicopter parents. I'll tell you that much. It wasn't like the Asian tiger mom where they, they were just like, Hey, let it happen. You know, we lived our life. We had our journey. You're going to have yours, you know? And that was it. It was kind of hands off. I, I'm the guy that's featuring for me now. I was on the phone with his dad the other day and it was so nice. And his father was so invested in what he was doing and wanted to know about everything he was doing. And it's like, Oh, that's what parenting is supposed to be. And a, my friends and a lot of our parents, they were, they were, they were wild people. They were fun. They were big personalities, but you know, it was about them. They were, they were invested in them. That whole generation of people, they were just invested in them and their kids were in the picture, but weren't the picture. And I remember this, this woman and 
they'd, you know, like many of these relationships, they break up, they get back together, they break up, they get back together. She goes to jail. You know how relationships are, folks. You get back together. Somebody goes to jail for identity theft. You get out of jail. You get a little coke. You put some of that on the street. You make a little money. You lose a little money. You, you have to go back to fuck some other guy you don't know. And you fucking write some fake checks. You know, you take his credit card. You take an advance on that. You're bouncing around. You get it. It's relationships. That's what they are. They're all deals. We're all making deals every minute of the day. She was always up to something. You know, phone conversations and parking parking lots where no one could hear her, that type of stuff. A fun woman, again, someone that I watched from afar and up close. I had no real investment in the outcome. I didn't want her to murder my friend, but I knew that that was a possibility, and that would have been okay too. Not that I wanted him to die, but sometimes people make a choice and they can't unmake it. You got to follow it to its logical conclusion. We always used to kid around. You know, she had an older grandmother, and we said she's going to kill that woman. She's going to push that woman down the stairs to try to inherit money or something. We always believed that, and we thought my friend would go along with it. We go, he'll probably do it too. It's just what they have to do. Sometimes you can't get in the way of somebody's story. Sometimes you can't sit down with someone and go, listen, you have to be a good moral person. It would be a waste of their time. Not everybody's here to do that. Some people are here not for a long time, but for a good time. They're going to have a little fun. They're going to make it interesting. They're what you're going to talk about in the diner while you're eating your eggs. You're going to read about them in the paper. Some people need to be that person, and you can't get in their way. So many of you are moralists. It's so boring. Oh, stop doing drugs. Stop stealing money. Don't be a whore. Oh, fuck you. Some people find that that's the only way they can feel free. The only way they can feel alive. It's really not my business. It's truly not my business. I'd rather you not abuse children. You know, I'd rather you not. But I will say, I think this woman, for all of her, you know, negatives, was a decent mother. You know, she had kids from many different races. She was woke. What I'm thinking is, when I remember her, I remember just somebody who, when you were with her, anything could happen. You know, just you just felt, I mean, and I literally mean anything. You know, if you if you need, go get a potato and put a Marlboro Light in its mouth and watch that and then press play on your phone. 